viewers, and thanks for tuning in to WACA TV's new business series, True Business Ownership with Rita Coco. I'm Rita, and I'm your host of these series. In every monthly episode, we bring to you, small business owners, true business ownership practices that you can have in order to grow your business without the suffering, without the stress, and without the sacrifice. And we call these kinds of business best practices true business ownership. You'll hear from various experts every month who will help us implement those best practices into our organizations because they are great at the work that they do and they are experts in their field. So today, our topic is cash flows like a river. Now, you heard cash flow and you might say, oh, where's that remote? I already know everything I need to know about cash flow. No, you don't. Our expert today, Lisa, will talk about all the things you need to know at the highest level about cash flow and how it affects your business. So stay with us these next few minutes and learn something that you really, really enjoy learning and can use tomorrow. So let's say hello. Hello, Lisa, and welcome. Hi, Rita. Thank you very much. So before you get started, Lisa, I want the viewers to know a bit about you and your background so that they're confident they've got an uh, incredible expert here, because I know I'm confident that you're the expert we need to have on the show. So let me begin. Lisa is a graduate, uh, graduate of the McDonough School of Business from Georgetown University. She was a financial management trainee of General Electric. She has worked in corporate financial planning and analysis for 20 years. So she definitely has that financial muscle that uh, she draws from. And I love this about Lisa. Lisa is the founder and owner of Bellwether Bookkeeping, Inc. And she founded this in 2006. Ready for this, folks? To fund her then burgeoning fiber arts hobby. Only Lisa would do this. Let me open up a bookkeeping business so that I can have fun with some yarn. But it wasn't long before Lisa's love of accounting overtook her love of the yarn and fiber arts. Today, Bellwether is a thriving businesses, business with over 100 clients. And lastly, Lisa is a welcomed member of various organizations such as the American Institute of Professional Bookkeepers, Neshoba Valley Chamber of Commerce, CEO Roundtable Boston, and is an Intuit Pro Advisor. So, Welcome, Lisa Dougal, to our show. Thank you, Rita. How was your weekend? Ah, oh, filled with so many things now that there's a holiday season going on. How was yours? Oh, it was great. Same deal here. Lots of holiday prep. But along the way, we were flipping channels, and I happened upon a documentary about the Colorado River, and it, it held me up. I got fascinated, and by the end, I have to say, I was a little shocked. They're shocked about the Colorado River. Uh oh. Do I really want to hear this? Okay. Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah I do. Okay. There's a there's a lot we can learn from it in terms of business, believe it or not. So think about the Colorado River. We think of it as the mighty Colorado that carved the Grand Canyon out of solid rock. It's got class five rapids. It's a daunting river all the way through. Um, it starts at its origin point up in the Rockies. It nice. flows through for millions of years. It has flowed through what are now seven U.S. states, and it comes down through Baja, California, to Mexico and out to the Sea of Cortez. But between 1960 and 1980, and this was the part I didn't realize, Rita, it stopped flowing all the way to the sea. Can you believe that? I thought it went to the sea. So it's it doesn't. Wow. Yeah, that is shocking. I had no idea that Neither it did. did yeah, oh. neither did I. And I couldn't stop thinking about it for the rest of the weekend. And the more I thought about it, it struck me at one point that the Colorado River is a perfect analogy for the cash flow of a business. 
Okay, so now I get the title cash flows like a river. All right, I'm ready. Let's let's go, Lisa. All right, let's talk about it. So the real Colorado River, as I said, it originates in the Rocky Mountains and it's got a gigantic catch basin up in the mountains. It's over 200,000 square miles, this catch basin. Water, uh, water flows in, the melt water from the Rockies, the rain falls in, the springs, all this water collects in a, what is called Grand Lake. That's the real name, aptly name, I might say. I agree, aptly name, Grand Lake. <laughs> yeah. um, and now let's think of that in terms of business. What's the origin of a business's cash flow? Well, it starts with a mountain of sales, yes? Yeah, yeah. So just as water collects in the real Grand Lake, when a business generates sales, the cash that's generated from the sales collects in, oh, let's, let's call it lake revenue. <laughs> okay, lake revenue. I love, first of all, I love the analogy of the river collecting into a lake. And then I love the analogy of how our sales collect into, and I've, Oh, oh, just love the lake revenue. Only <laughs> you would do this one. So keep going. I, I can hear the analogies now. Yeah, I know. It's a good one. Okay, so in the real, uh, for the real Colorado River, the rain falls and all of the water actually does make it into Grand Lake. But in a business, and this is a critical point, not all of what's generated from sales makes it into our lake revenue, okay? Um, your sales numbers could be outstanding, but if you are you actually collecting all that cash, that's the key point. So here's a recommendation I'd like to make to our viewers. Um, make sure you're invoicing regularly and often because you can't tell the customers don't know what to pay if you can't send them an invoice. And second of all, once you've sent out those invoices out, make sure you're monitoring your accounts receivable really closely, really carefully because your lake revenue only fills up when your customers actually pay you. I, that is such a great recommendation, Lisa. And I agree with you. My past clients have often said, I am so busy that I wait for the evening to do my invoices. And then in the evening, I'm so tired, I wait for the weekend. And then of course I wanna play on the weekend and so on and so on. And a month later, it's not even like the cash is going to come in. They haven't even billed yet. And there's usually a, you know, net uh, wait for five days to pay or 10 days to pay. So that's even more. It's just, you're so spot on about, oh let's, I, yeah, let's I get that revenue. You. I can't tell you how often I see this in small businesses. Of course. It, it's yeah, pandemic, but, right? Oh, ooh. Yes, and, and it's great that you've got a recommendation. Let's get those invoices out there and let's get collecting going too. Get the collections going. Keep that going. That's the key point right there. All right, so let's talk about the river now. We've talked about the catch basin. We've talked about the lake. Let's talk about the actual river. So when Grand Lake is filled to capacity, it spills into the Colorado Riverbed and there is where the actual flow of the river begins. Now, we know that Mother Nature actually controls the real flow in the actual Colorado River, but a business owner controls how much cash flows into their lake revenue. And there's a lot of ways that they can control the flow. So the main thing is sales initiatives. What are they doing to generate and control sales? They can be doing marketing and advertising. Mm -hmm. They can be doing digital marketing. They can be doing uh, social marketing media campaigns. They can be doing networking, generating referrals from uh, existing customers and other networking uh, connections, or they can be doing sales promotion. There's just a lot, a lot of ways right. that we as business owners fill up our lake revenue with sales initiatives. And here's another um, little recommendation to business owners. Okay. Make sure you have a cohesive and intentional sales plan to keep that revenue flowing. Well, I'm glad you mentioned sales planning. And this is what's important to our viewers uh, because not only are you a financial manager, because you have a background in business, you're able to say something like, well, yeah, I can do your financials here, but let's talk about how it's going to come in. Let's talk about this type of planning, sales planning. Let's talk about the marketing. Where are you getting the leads? 
So it's really great for our viewers to know, Lisa, that when they come to you, it's not just about, did you put this data entry in? Did you go and bill that? Did you collect here? It's looking at that bigger picture because after all, the Colorado River is one big river to, to manage and cash flow can be a big thing to manage. Exactly so. right, Rita. And you know, what I've learned over the years is, and I learned it very early on, you cannot be an effective finance manager unless you fully understand the organization you support and the operations that you support and what triggers the business. If you don't understand the triggers in the business, you don't, you're not going to know what to measure. Yeah, I agree. I so agree. let's talk about um, diversion of the Colorado River flow. Okay, so the Colorado River, it comes from the Rockies, it flows down through seven states, and all along the way, there are portions of the river's flow are being diverted for various uses. So um, there are irrigation pipelines that pull water away to irrigate farms and fields. There are um, reservoirs that are man-made in order to pool water for drinking water for towns and cities. Um, there's aqueducts that actually channel water hundreds of miles away from the actual river to cities and towns far away. It's amazing. Um, how many people survive on this, on the Colorado River flow. And then there are dams that are put in place at various points along the river to um, pool water to generate power and electricity. So um, when you think about that, in the same way that the Colorado's water flow is diverted, we divert money from our business cash flow river to do several things. Um, and one of them, the first one I would say is we have our irrigation pipeline. I like to think of it as an irrigation situation because we're funding the manufacturing of the product that we're selling, right? So we're actually creating the product we need to sell and we're pulling money from our cash flow in order to do that, right? Okay. So that's our, okay. so it's our cost of goods for the accounting people out there. It's our cost of goods sold. Okay, the next important thing we have is our employees, right? right? So we have a payroll aqueduct that channels water away from the flow of the river in order to fund our, our salaries. <laughs> payroll we, aqueduct. Oh, okay. good. Well, aqueduct. you know. Hey, you know, oh. in for a penny, in for a pound, Rita. So, I'm, I'm <laughs> loving these new terminologies. That, uh, <laughs> but it's more visual, so I, I'm, I'm game. I'm game. Yeah. 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 We're, going to we're going to revolutionize accounting terminology, the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. <laughs> Good, me too. Okay, so we have the payroll aqueduct. We're funding salaries. We're funding hourly wages. We're funding performance bonuses. We're funding uh, raises. We're funding payroll taxes. All of that is very, very necessary. You can't have a business without your employees. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is our expense dam, like the big Hoover Dam. We're going to yeah. build an expense dam, and it's going to pool the river's flow so that we can generate power to fund our overhead expenses because that's what powers our business, right? It's the um, it's the marketing and advertising, all of our overhead expenses, marketing and advertising. Um, it's um, facilities expenses, rent, internet. Right. Um, phones, right. all of the infrastructure costs, it's um, our internet, um, travel, all of those types of expenses are funded by overhead expense, right? It's, so so what you're saying is we have this money and then we have to spend this money to make the money, to make the product. So there's a pipeline, there's money going there, there's money going into our human assets, our people to make our company what it is, it, whether it's service or product, both. And so that aqueduct has to be there. It's not as if we I can avoid that. So knowing that it's there and knowing that money is going there is really important. And finally, of course, all the other expenses shouldn't surprise us. And yet, I know you're going to talk about this, the planning for all this. It's, it's not, oh, geez, I have $2,000 extra. Let me see if I can make payroll this week. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. See if I can make payroll. Well, you, you'll lose a couple of people especially the ones you haven't paid. So 
I'm, I'm hearing all, I love these containers that you put together and I love the fact that they're visual. Thanks for that. And continue on with the yes. analogies. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, you know, as you pointed out, we all know, I think it's a fundamental truth in business. You've got to spend money to make money, right? Um, but I think all too often the thinking process stops there, right? So um, here's another recommendation I'd like to make to business owners. It's really, really important for, for us to understand the financial business model that supports our business. So that means for every dollar of revenue come, that comes in, there's, there's a correct amount of money that you should spend to manufacture your product or deliver your service. There's a correct amount of money that you should use to fund your payroll. And there's an appropriate amount of money that should be spent on your overhead expenses. So you need to plan ahead, you need to build that business model, and then you need to measure against it. Wow. So I love the fact that you're saying there's a percentage that comes out of every dollar. But more importantly, Lisa, which which I've just really caught, it's like there's an appropriate amount of money that comes. It's not willy-nilly. It's not look at the big expense I have. It and that's a comfort, I think. It's a comfort to me as a business owner, and it should be a comfort to our viewers to know it's not as if we have to guess. And you have the ideas, especially in different industries and in different businesses, what's appropriate and not appropriate. Just to know those benchmarks, to know what I should be doing is a whole heck of a lot better than the guesswork. And the least amount of guesswork, the least amount of stress and the business decisions that you make that I work with when I'm doing business consulting, it's just, it's just so good. You don't have to guess at this. It's all there for you. So I love, love those points in that recommendation, Lisa. Thank you. And, and you're exactly right. You know, there are different financial business models for different types of businesses. You know, manufacturing business is going to have a completely different business model than a service business. Yeah. And, you know, you can uh, slice, uh, slice and dice even more finely than that. The critical thing is know what your business model is, benchmark, benchmark yourself against other businesses like yours. Um, at a most basic level, here's the reason why we do business modeling. OK, because all right, let me go back to the real Colorado now. At this point, we've had all these diversions from the Colorado River for irrigation, da, 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 like we talked about before. And whatever whatever of the rivers flow is left after all of that flows out to the sea. So from a business perspective, whatever is left over after all of the cash diversions is our profit. And that flows into our sea of wealth. <laughs> sea of wealth. Uh -huh. I, I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I, I get it now why all that river is so diverted that, as you said, I forget the dates, but um, now it's five miles short. Imagine being 10, five days short of no profit. Exactly. Because, oh, wow. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I love the analogy, Lisa, but it's also, you know, a wake up call that, you know, our sea of wealth, our profit um, is, is really good. And I, I, I also know that the business owners who think about, I got to get that money to my sea of wealth too. And they think about their profitability. Yes. They breathe a whole lot easier because they know I'm focusing on what goes in my pocket, what yes. goes into my sea of wealth. And so you coming in with this analogy says, I, I can't be cut short. I've got to get to that sea of wealth. And I think that's a visual that people are going to walk away with on this program. And thank you for that, Lisa. You bet, you bet. So, you know, as you said, the water doesn't flow all the way to the, to the sea these days. It stops five miles short. And in real life, Rita, that has had a tremendous impact on the people who live in those five miles where the river no longer flows. They don't have water for irrigation. 
They can't farm and field. They can't fish. They can't build a sustainable life on the river because the river isn't there anymore. So in the exact same way, if you don't have any profit flowing to the sea, guess what? That's a loss, as you said. And the further, the less and less you make it to the sea, the more and more of an actual loss you're going to have. And that's not a paper loss or a pretend loss or a tax loss or any of these other kinds of losses that people think are fake. This is real. You're losing real money. So um, let's stretch the analogy a bit further. You make uh, money from your business and that's your personal income and you put it into your savings account, which is like your swimming pool in your backyard. Okay. 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 When you're losing money in your business, that means you're going to the swimming pool in the backyard and pulling cash out to dump it back into your cash flow river just to make ends meet. Okay. It's, it's not that you're breaking even. I mean, you could be breaking even and making no money, right? Or you could be actually losing and having to continuously pour money back into your business, stealing from your swimming pool in the backyard. So, um, so we really, really, really want um, our business owners to be paying attention to the business model and planning ahead for profit. So um, recommendation, profit, make profit a part of your business model, right? So there's an appropriate amount of cogs, there's an appropriate amount of payroll, there's an appropriate amount of, and there's an appropriate amount of profit that you will and should make from your business. Plan and manage to that because, you know, we're all, we're entrepreneurs here and we love doing business. We love managing our businesses, but it's a lot more fun when you're actually making money. Yeah, boy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. You know, Lisa, these are very incredible uh, words and great words that you're uh, giving to us today. And, you know, I do think back at uh, back at the pandemic, Imagine the business model you had, and maybe you were um, uh, doing okay in the pandemic, or maybe not, and maybe that business model has to change. But having you here today and, and listening to you and saying, okay, let's look at another business model if that one didn't quite work. And, um, you know, I'm looking at business continuity and what's next, and how do I look at my new financial model. So there's still hope out there for an awful lot of people um, who went through the pandemic. Yes, even if you made money during the pandemic, that may not be where you are going to stay and what's that business model. So you're, all these uh, words help with less stress, less sacrifice, less suffering because I'm ahead of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Two great points here, Rita. One, the great pivot during COVID. Let's think about that for a second. The business owners who were able to successfully pivot did so because they already understood their business model. They already understood their cost structure. And then they were able to look at what was going on with the pandemic and they were able to say, okay, you know, bubble theory, this is going down. So where am I going to go up? And they were able to craft a brand new business model or adjust their business model to continue to make money, right? The business owners who had no idea what their model was to begin with had no idea what to tweak, how to pivot, how to even take one step sideways. And unfortunately, um, they're among all of the sad, sad um, businesses that didn't make it through the pandemic. Um, you know, but it's not all hopeless, okay? For the real Colorado River, there are various state agencies, the Army Corps of Engineers. There's a whole bunch of people working really, really hard on the Colorado River. They manage the diversions, how much flow comes out. They manage the river's flow. And there are initiatives in place to get that river back to flowing all the way to the sea, which is so hopeful. So hopeful. I feel like a cheerleader. Yay. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to read the news that the Colorado, Colorado River's back to the sea. Um, and in the same way, um, we can manage and restore cash flow, um, control our cash flow and make sure our river makes it to the sea. We can take corrective action. So as I was saying before, know your business model and using that as a backbone, do a budget for every single year. The two things are different, okay? The, the business model is ratios and percentages. What percent of your sales dollar goes here, there, and everywhere? 
but your budget for the year is how big is my basin going to be? How big is lake revenue going to be? And then subsequently, how big are my cost of goods, my payroll expenses, and my overhead expenses? So once you craft that budget, you've got to measure, you've got to manage, you've got to look at it at a minimum every single month, actuals versus budget. If weekly, if you can, and daily, if you can, that's harder, but it's doable in some businesses. Um, and additionally, design some key performance indicators that will give you an early warning sign when you're starting to get off track, right? And as soon right. as you see the business veering off course, you have plenty of time to make corrective action. If the expenses are uh, ballooning, um, let's put a stop to that and get us back toward profitability. So, um, you know, if you can keep your financial cash flow strong and healthy through the entire length of your river, let as much cash flow as you can to profits, because in the end, it's all about filling the sea of wealth, is it? Isn't it? It's all about filling that sea of wealth. I, um, you've mentioned an awful lot of things that we're doing and or that we should be doing. And so um, I'm looking at the time and I know we have four more minutes and I'm wondering if you can um, help in this way. Um, I, I'm listening to you and I know that our viewers sometimes are solopreneurs, uh, sometimes are small business with less than 10 people and some viewers have many, many people with, with maybe their own um, manage financial manager aboard. And so this is all interesting and the financial managers listening to you also. But I think of those folks who are saying, I'm in overwhelm. Where do I start? Um, I don't even know what to ask Lisa. I, I, I mean, if I call her and, and yes, her number is going to be on the uh, end of this show, folks, so don't uh, go away. Um, and I think of, I mean, a, a, an aqueduct, a, an expense dam. And not only do I know I have these because I've seen them in my business, but also now I've got a plan. But I don't know. I mean, I've heard budget and I think about budget, but I really don't do it. So Lisa, in the next um, two minutes, can you just tell us uh, and wrap this up for us? What can you do um, to help these people say, I'm going to Lisa and I'm going to be handheld throughout what I don't know, I don't know. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, here at Bellwether Bookkeeping, we're much more than bookkeeping. We're actually business partners with our clients. And so in terms of what we've discussed today, Rita, the first thing we make sure our clients have is up-to-date, accurate financials. So we are closing their books every single month. We're shipping out financial statements for them. So they always have the business information they need to make management decisions, okay? Financials aren't just for tax prep. More importantly, they're there to help you manage your business. So we make sure our business owners have that up-to-date information. Right. Um, right. In many cases, we send these financials out to them and um, they might write back and say, I have no idea what this means. Bingo. That, right. Yes, that's where I'm coming you from. You have the paper in your hand, but right. you can't read it. So um, that's what the next step is. We actually meet with our clients to help them understand what the numbers mean, right? Good. We'll walk them through their balance sheet. We'll walk them through their profit and loss statement and make sure they truly understand how that relates to real life in their business and how that relates to the actual cash flow that's flowing through their business. Um, so then the next thing we can do is help them create that budget right? Okay, we good. can help them craft their business financial model, help them understand what exactly it is. We can show them, here's the financial business model you have now, and here's where you need to be. So we can help them make that path, generate that path so that they can get from here to there. And then, as I said, we can help them make the budget based on that business model. So year after year, they have something to measure and manage against. And then finally, and um, my most favorite thing that we do for clients is we actually can meet with clients on a weekly basis and do cash flow management hand in hand with them. So we have weekly meetings that say, here's the money that's come in since last week. Here are the obligations we have for uh, the vendor bills we need to pay, the payroll we need to make in two weeks, the um, reserves we need to set up. You know, that's something we haven't really talked about. Are we setting aside money for taxes? 
No. Are we setting yeah. aside money to buy down that credit card that got a little out of hand? Um, so these are all the kinds of financial decisions that we help our business owners make week in, week out. So Lisa, thank you so much for that. And I want to wrap this up with a thank you so much for the analogy for the Colorado River and all that. And we're all listening and we're all going to be staying tuned. So viewers, if you liked what you heard today, good news. Lisa, contact is at the end of the show. Please reach out to her when and talk more about your finances and get um, that sea of wealth built up. And if you liked even one little morsel of information that you know you can hear today and, and can use tomorrow, I invite you to come back because we have another speaker who's going to talk to you about how to get leads online so that you can fill your lake revenue. Please stay tuned to WACA TV's website to know when our next TV show is going to happen. Until then. Have a great couple of weeks and see you soon. Take care now.